I pray and hope everyone enjoyed their Thanksgiving, but there's nothing better than Christmas time. No. <laughs> the turkey's been gone. Celebrate on Jesus. As you know, today is, um, good, we have the scripture up there, Romans 15, 13. So today we're going to look at that incredible, that gift. That gift of hope that only comes through the presence of Jesus Christ. Amen. Maybe you've heard that today we're focusing on, on hope today. And maybe you didn't just go, yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> That's exactly what I, I want to know more about. I need stronger hope. That might have been you, but, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe someone you know wouldn't have said that today. Even though hope is referenced dozens of times in Scripture, you got to realize we don't pause much. We don't take much time, do we? To focus on exactly what it is and why it's so important for not just life in general, but the Christian life. Yeah. We need this. Amen. Many of the main reasons is because what we mean by hope and what the Bible means by hope are, are two different, very different things. When we use the word hope, isn't it more about this? Yeah. I can't do it too good. I broke my one finger, but crossing your fingers. Yeah. Wishful thinking. I hope my marriage gets better. I hope my kids turn out okay. I hope the tumor is benign. We use hope more as wishing for something, not necessarily expecting it. Like that old expression, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Mm -hmm. Many of us live that way. It's something that I want, but not something that I can count on. But that's the exact opposite of what God's word says. Amen. What the Bible means by hope. When the Bible speaks of hope, it's not referring to something that's a possibility. Which many of us think that's what it is. But rather something that's a certainty. Right. It's not something that could happen, but something that will happen. Amen. Biblical hope is such a sore, sure thing, folks. You can build. I hope you build your life around it. Because <laughs> yes. when Pastor Cindy called me the other day, she said, do you want to miss Sunday? I said, hell no. <laughs> I didn't say that words, but that's what I meant to say. <laughs> this is where I have to be. <laughs> My brother went from, from grief to glory in an oh, instant. Amen. Yeah. Hebrews 10.23, let us hold unwaveringly love to the hope we profess for his promise is faithful. Yeah. Biblical hope, it's as strong, as trustworthy as God, and this is why. Because isn't that who it came from? Yeah. Hope is a constant and confident assurance that we have nothing to fear. Because the almighty God himself, he is with us. Amen. He is in us. Amen. Amen. And he is for us. Amen. Amen. Keep those three words, terms in your mind. Matthew one twenty three. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. And they shall call him Emmanuel, which is translated, we just heard it. God is with us. Colossians 1. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. Romans 8. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, we just who heard it. Who can be against us? Amen. The answer is what? Nobody. <laughs> this incredible God who has unlimited power, unlimited understanding, unlimited wisdom, unlimited love, undefeatable. He's undistractable. Who works out everything perfectly according to to, his to Will's will? No. No. Your will? No. It says his will. Amen. His word, his way. The God is with you always. Amen. The God is in you. The God is for you. He created you. He loves you. He died for you. He saved you. He forgave Amen. you. He cleansed you. Amen. He protects you. He sustains you. And he guides you. He will be with you forever. That's what gives me hope. These divine promises... Uh, Promises are to form our foundation of hope, and that's what we're going to do today. Hope is the fuel for our faith. Faith keeps believing. Hope is what we keep believing in. In Peter 1, Peter says, always be ready to give an answer. 
are you always ready to give this answer <laughs> to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have? You have to be ready. Yep. That's what Peter says. That's what the Lord says. The word reason for it is, is logos, from which we get that word legit, legit, logical. I'm sorry. The hope we have is not rooted in fantasy. It's, it's rooted here. It's rooted in reason. This is reason, folks. Our hope is full of imagination, but it's founded on, on, on reasonable explanation. That's what this word is. This explains it to me. So with all that in mind, let's read today's text together. You ready? Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in and believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's a very short scripture, but there's so much in it. In one short verse, you find so much about hope. The hope of God that you can build your life on it. First, we see the source of hope. May the God of hope, that's what we have. Amen. You know, we see similar scriptures throughout the whole Bible. The God of truth, mm -hmm. the God of mercy, the God of patience, the God of comfort, the God of love, the God of all grace. So here Paul says, he is the God of hope. I think we understand a couple things in a couple ways of that. Number one, he is the supplier of hope. Let's yes. say that. He, he is, is the, the supplier, supplier of hope. Of hope. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> the hope that God wants you to possess it's only his to give you ever think about that yeah. he's got a monopoly on it doesn't he he, <laughs> he can't manufacture this hope he can't fake this hope he can't reproduce it God's hope is given to God's people as they trust in God's son yeah. that's where it starts the psalmist said I find rest in God only he gives me hope. You know, people put their hope in so many things. That's why our world is such a mess. The government, a relationship, your finances. They're all finite. Like, you can't take them with you. No. Pastor just said that. If you put your hope in anything else, anything that's, anything that's temporary, your hope will not last. Yeah. It just can't. That's why the, the biblical writers did this. They, they exalted. They warned us. Not to put our hope in false things, but the eternal God. Only he is the source that lasts. Number two, he is the object of hope. So in other words, he gives us hope because he is hope. Amen. He gives us hope by giving us himself. Yes. Ephesians 2 says, those who are godless are hopeless. Yes. Our world. Much of our world, they're hopeless. They don't know where hope comes from. Yeah. Yeah. The absence of God means the absence of hope. And God, he just doesn't give us hope. He is hope. And you might say, well, I still don't understand why God allows so many things to happen to us. The difficulties that I'm going through right now. But it, he is with us. He is in us. And he is for us. Amen. Amen. Here's a little picture. Have you ever seen, you've probably never seen a giraffe born before. Either have I. <laughs> but it must be some kind of, some kind of a sight. <laughs> As we know, the first part of that giraffe that comes out are their front hooves. Then the calf appears and it tumbles 10 feet to the ground. Ouch. <laughs> Within a matter of seconds, it rolls over, stands up on those wobbly legs, then an amazing thing happens. The mother giraffe positions herself over that baby, swings out her long legs, and kicks that baby, sending it head over heels. It doesn't, if it doesn't get up, she kicks it again. If it gets tired, she kicks it again to stimulate it to stand up. Wow. Every time that baby manages to get up, the mother kicks it over again. That seems cruel to us. It seems unnecessary until you understand what's happening. Yeah. That mother knows that if that baby is going to survive, in the wild it has to get up and, and yeah. learn to run with the herd or it will die. The mother giraffe is teaching this baby a very important thing as you relate it to her life. You can't stay down, you have to get up. Amen. 
When light got kicked around, you have to remember the giraffe. Mm -hmm. Are you getting kicked around today? Are you going to get up? Yeah. <laughs> I know Pastor will make you get up. <laughs> Difficult, what I'm saying, difficulty strengthens hope. Yes. Romans 5, 2. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perturbed. Perseverance produces character, and character hope. Yeah. Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out onto our hearts through that Holy Spirit. Amen. Who has been given to us. What a verse. When it comes to reference to hope in the Bible, here are the top three books. We have Psalms, we have Romans, and we have Job. Job? Really? <laughs> does that surprise you? Job suffered the loss of his children. All of them, virtually all his property, his good health. He struggled to see God, where God in the face of overwhelming suffering and struggle and adversity. Have you been there? Yeah. Yep. We all have. And in that struggle, he came face to face with that living God and, and Job was in awe. One of the most famous statements from Job is this. Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. He could take everything from me. I would still praise his name. Amen. Can you do that? Yeah. You have to. Yeah. You have to. Right. This is all temporary. You know what Job came to understand here? He learned that Satan's goal wasn't to destroy him. It was to discredit God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It didn't work. Our goal should not be to, to live a, a pain-free life. But live a life that brings glory and honor to Lord. Amen. That's why we're here. Max Lucado wrote, A season of suffering is a small price to pay for a clear view of God. Amen. I pray that as these weeks go by till Christmas, each week is clear with each message. Amen. You know, Job, he suffered. But his suffering produced his perseverance. Perseverance produced his character. In character, it produced hope. Yeah. That's how it has to work in our lives. God had filled Job with that confident and constant assurance that it was nothing to fear because God Almighty was with him, in him, and for him. Amen. 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 So when that situation comes, or if you know someone where that situation is hopeless, they are saying, there's no hope for me. You know what you're doing? You're slamming the door in God's face. Right. When the world says give up, our hope whispers, try it one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to give up, folks. Mm -hmm. To our dying breath, our last heartbeat, we can't give up. Yes. Secondly, Paul teaches us the evidence of hope. May the God of hope fill you with what? Joy. All joy and joy. peace. Yeah. When you have confident and, and, and constant assurance that you, you can live without fear, you live with faith, because God Almighty is with you, He's for you, it produces something in here, something wonderful. It produces that joy and peace yeah. that you can have no matter what you go through. Amen. Galatians 5, 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Fruit is, is simply an outward evidence of God's work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is God working in your lives today? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I know it. Oh, yeah. This is a heck of a church. Believe me. <laughs> Joy and peace are the, the fruit of evidence, of proof of inward work of that Holy Spirit. Yes. Whom you received, how? By trusting in Jesus. Peace and joy are impossible apart from the hope of God. Yep. Yeah. It is. It just simply is. If you don't have that constant confidence and assurance that comes from knowing God, that is with you, in you, and for you, you're going to struggle with peace and joy. That's right. Yep. Hope is that, that fertile soil mm. which peace and joy spring from. It grows daily. It's so easy to get our eyes on this broken world. Don't watch the TV anymore. <laughs> The government, broken families, broken bodies, <clears throat> broken churches. We want to throw our hands up sometimes 
in the air and say, what's the use? I've talked to some Christians lately. They say, I think we should just give up. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> give up. Is it, Now's the time to go. <laughs> are you kidding me? They're not, I, I kind of question where their, their faith lies. But that's what one guy said to me. He said, we should just throw our hands up. I'm not ready to throw my hands up. Are you? No way. No way. You know, Jesus didn't come into this world and gave his life on a cross for our sins if all was hopeless. Amen. Jesus came in this world to give us hope and to help us today and give us hope for tomorrow. Amen. And that hope that he is with us, he is in us, it fills us with that joy and that peace that only he can provide. Amen. Amen. How can you be so happy when someone you loved for 70 years passed away the other day? Mm. Yep. Because I know where he is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Corey Ten Boom, who was a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp, for two years said this, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. That's right. Great words. And there's a third aspect of hope. The activation of hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you Believe. trust in him, believe in him. Hope is available, folks, but it's not automatic. Yeah. It doesn't come automatically. So how do you access, the, access that hope of God that floods you with, with the peace and joy? It's by trusting in him. Yeah. Yeah. Unrelational. Relational. It has to be relational. Trusting in God means we believe in Him. We believe who He is. We, we obey what He says. Yeah. It can't be one or the other. It has to be both, doesn't it? Yeah. Psalms 25. No one who ever hopes in you will ever be put to shame. Psalms 28. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him. Amen. And He helps me. My heart leaps for joy. And with my song, I praise Him. Amen. Every day. Amen. Our level of trust in, in God is revealed when we, we're put in a hard spot, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when trials and troubles hit our life, we have a choice. Yep. We can choose to trust ourselves, trust others, or we can trust God. It's only one mm -hmm. of three choices you have. Yep. I pray that we will pick the list. You remember the Israelites when they, when they left Egypt going out to the Promised Land? Well... When he came to the Red Sea, the Pharaoh was, was right behind him, right? Mm -hmm. He was ready to kill him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They appeared trapped, didn't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. With that deep sea in front of them, mm -hmm. that bloodthirsty king behind them. <laughs> Why would God promise to take care of them and then put them in such a situation that appeared so hopeless? <laughs> God could have parted that Red Sea two days earlier, couldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> nice and dry, just go across, but he didn't do that. And here's why. He waited so they would learn to trust him. Amen. So that their hope in God would grow. Amen. That's how he treats us. He doesn't make it perfect every day. He was producing in them a confident, constant assurance. They had nothing to fear because God was with them and for them. Amen. As their trust in God grew, their hope in him was strengthened, wasn't it? Many of you have a life verse. And if your verse goes, when things get tough, we like to say it. When life gets difficult, we have that verse. Many of you have chosen Jeremiah 29, 11, which says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. hope. Yeah. What many people don't realize is this promise of God came one of the lowest times in, in the history of Israel. God makes a statement right before Israel's about to go into 70 years of captivity, right? They're about to go into the most hopeless situation. And yet God, what does he do? He speaks the most hopeful thing to them. Amen. God says, you failed. And yes, you're about to experience some difficulties and consequences. Yeah. <laughs> But I want you to know, this is what God said to him, I haven't given up on you. I'm not throwing you aside. In fact, I have great things ahead for you. 
This isn't meant to end you, but to awaken you. This is meant to get your eyes on me. I'm telling you this because I want you to trust me. I want you to focus on me. This is God's words. I want you to believe me, he's saying. I want you to hope in me. All of us have probably sang that song, that hymn, Standing on the Promise of God. The great thing is you can't break God's promises by standing on the truth. Right. Amen. By standing on them. God's promise can't be broken by you or by God. So as you stand on his promises by trusting in him, he will strengthen you. He will flood you full of hope. Amen. And lastly, Paul shows us the abundance of hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Paul reminds us that the supply of hope is unlimited. You know, God doesn't just give us a cup of hope, does he? A gallon? An ocean? <laughs> <laughs> Our eternal God gives us an endless supply of hope. Amen. That will never run dry. Yes. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He keeps filling us and, and refilling us with that hope as we trust in Him every day. Amen. You will never face a day or a circumstance, folks, or a season of life where He will give you all the hope you need to get through it. What a great God we have. Yes, amen. Hebrews 6. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. Beautiful words. Yeah. Let me explain what that hope means to be an anchor for our soul. In Bible times, before we had the technology to dredge out canals and harbors. They had come up with this ingenious way to get a ship into a small harbor. When a ship would be outside the harbor, and maybe there would be a lot of dangerous rocks in, in there, they would often take one little boat and put one man in that boat, and he would take the anchor from that big boat and put it in his little boat. Then that one sailor, who was called a forerunner, he would, he would row into that harbor, and he would place that that anchor where he thought was a safe place where some rocks were and, and, and wedged that anchor into those rocks. Then the ship had to do, all it had to do was just follow that small boat into the harbor because the anchor would be attached to the big boat. Although the ship wasn't in a harbor, the anchor was. <laughs> all they had to do was follow. They were as good as safe. The Bible says, doesn't he say, Jesus is our hope, doesn't yep. it? Say that. Yeah. Amen. Jesus is our rock. Yeah. Jesus is also our anchor. Yeah. yeah. Maybe someone here today, or you know someone, and you're drifting. Maybe just floating around, getting blown around by every wind, every fad, every confusion. And you just pushed and blown about. What you need is an anchor for your life. Amen. Yeah. You know who's that anchor? Yeah. Jesus himself. What does the Bible say again in that verse? Jesus had entered the sanctuary behind the curtain. That's talking about the Holy of Holies. Yeah. And Jesus said, the word who went before us, those four words, forerunner, one word, the same thing that that little sailor who would sail into that harbor with the anchor. Jesus is our forerunner, folks. Amen. He entered on our behalf. Let me tell you what that means. That means that you and I right now, we're not obviously in heaven, are we? No. no. We're not. But we're on earth. But because we're attached to Jesus Christ by faith Amen. and we trust in him, Amen. our soul is already anchored Amen. in heaven. Amen. What a great, glorious. Thank you, Jesus. He is with us, and he's guiding us into that harbor with precision. He knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. And now, like that ship that's not yet in the harbor, but is safely anchored there, mm -hmm. we too are not in heaven, but through Jesus Christ, are, we are safely anchored. 
Thank you, Jesus. That's not wishful thinking, folks. That's the truth. That is the constant confidence assurance that we have nothing to fear because that God Almighty, He is with us. He is in us. He is for us. Amen. That is our hope for today, tomorrow, and the Amen. rest of our lives. Yeah, that is our joy for today, tomorrow, and the rest of our lives. That is our peace for today, Amen. tomorrow, and the rest Amen. of our lives. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. He knew what he was doing right from the beginning, didn't he? Amen. I sure wouldn't have done it that way, as I say every year. I would have just came and reprimanded everybody and told them to straighten up their act and not Jesus. So thank God Amen. that you have Jesus Amen. and not Pastor Cindy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this morning when we were reading our Jesus Calling, it really touched me and I'd like to end our service with that. <laughs> Do not be, now watch how this fits in. You, you just can't make this stuff up. Do not be surprised by the fiery attacks on your mind. When you struggle to find me and to live in my peace, don't get discouraged and let discouragement set in. You are engaged in a massive warfare, spiritually speaking. The evil one abhors your closeness to me and his demonic underlings are determined to destroy our intimacy. When you find yourself in the thick of the battle, call upon my name. Amen. Jesus, help me. Let's say that. Jesus, Jesus help, help me. me. At that instant, the battle becomes mine. Amen. Woo. Let's say it again. Jesus, Jesus help, help me. me. He's there. Amen. Now he's going to fight that battle. Amen. And you can Amen. lay it all down. And when you got that big guy in front of you, you don't have to be afraid. <laughs> At that instant, the battle becomes mine, and your role is simply to trust me as I fight for you. But don't be like the little boy that wants the Amazon to come early. <laughs> Let Jesus fight the way he needs to fight. Amen. As you wait in joyful hope, my name properly used watch this has unlimited power to bless and protect yes. Amen. praise God issue is we don't use it enough right. let's say it again Jesus help me Jesus, Jesus help, help me. me at the end of time every say every every, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth when my name is proclaimed. People who have used Jesus as a shoddy swear word will fall down in terror on that awesome day. But all those who have drawn near me through trusting, uttering my name will be filled with inexpressible joy and glorious joy. This is your great hope as you wait in my for my return. Thank you. And first Peter one eight and nine says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith and the salvation of your soul. Amen. Amen. Amen.